it's with tremendous pleasure that I'd like to introduce our closing keynote for um, for Tate uh, 2021. Um, nine years ago, in 2012, uh, we wrote a blog post uh, called Soul Searching. And in it was um, one very specific uh, observation. Um, and I quote, we suspect that if an open annotation standard for annotation is successful long term, that our front end will eventually be built into the browser where it belongs, in addition to being duplicated, enhanced, or possibly reinvented by others leveraging a common API. That sounds like success to us. It means our job on the front end right now is to create a phenomenal reference implementation for the user interface that, for instance, Mozilla might build into Firefox. I'll say it again now. If annotation is ever to become mainstream and fulfill our larger dreams and ambitions, then it must become native to browsers, not just one browser, but all browsers. As native to browsers as the link or the tab. Um, and that doesn't diminish the role of the annotation community or more particularly us at Hypothesis, in my opinion. Um, rather, it, it complements it and extends it in important ways. And so for all of us who believe this deeply, we have a new champion, and that champion is David Bokan. David is a software developer on the web platform team at Google who works on Chromium, the engine under Google Chrome that is used by lots of browsers now, from Microsoft Edge to Brave, Opera, Vivaldi, and of course, um, and of course Chrome itself. Over the last several years, David has helped think about and ultimately deliver a precursor to web annotation called Scroll to Text, which is a capability now live in Chrome that allows the browser to scroll to any arbitrary text on any web page through a simple URL enhancement. And it's a feature inside of, of Chrome that if you go to Google search results in a Google search and click on a, on a result, you may see or remember seeing that when Google takes you to that page, it scrolls you down to the, to the part of the page that referenced ultimately the search query that you made, um, and that uses um, scroll to text. Um, and in bringing that feature to Chrome, um, David really worked um, in the open, um, posting his code and prototype code on, on GitHub and recruiting a lot of us in the annotation community to the discussion about how the feature should work and how it should relate to the W3C web annotation standard. So about when about a month ago, um, he sent me an email and, and shared um, a document with me that, that outlined a vision for bringing open internet in interoperable federated annotation to Chromium in a much bigger way. I was pretty excited. And in, and in short, David's, without <laughs> stealing his thunder, um, David's concept is as close as I can imagine to, kind of, to checking all the boxes that I think would need to be checked. In, in such an impl implementation. So I won't get in his way any longer. Um, let me uh, allow him to explain this to you for himself. David, the floor is yours. Well, thanks, Dan, uh, for the introduction and uh, for inviting me here to speak. Uh, I'm excited to share uh, some of the explorations that we've been looking at um, and, and the vision that I think we're trying to build. Um, so I've, I've got my email here uh, on the screen. Uh, feel free to reach out to me with any comments or questions uh, after this talk. Uh, and yeah, if you want to, I've got a couple of links in the slides. Um, so if, if you want to follow along, uh, I've got the link to these slides here as well. Um, but yeah, I just want to start off uh, and build a little bit of context. Um, so Dan already mentioned some of this, but uh, about a year ago, uh, we on the web platform team in Chrome uh, shipped an extension to URL fragments that we call text fragments. Uh, and a text fragment allows a URL to point to a specific snippet of text on a destination page. Uh, so it makes links a lot more granular and precise. Um, and incidentally, this is something uh, that I think annotations also really want to do. Uh, so like Dan mentioned, we got a lot of engagement from the annotation community in that work. Um, and that was kind of how I got introduced into like what annotations are and, and what the community is trying to do. Um, so fast forward a little bit, um, more recently, uh, our browser team has actually been working on uh, building on top of some of the work we did for text fragments uh, and just building out like more useful sharing scenarios. Um, so actually just last week, uh, we launched uh, this new feature, uh, which is uh, allows users to generate these kinds of links. 
Um, so if you go in the latest version of Chrome, uh, you should be able to see a copy link to highlight uh, menu uh, item. Uh, and on Android, uh, you have a similar option now in like the sharing hub. Uh, and so now that we have all these sharing features built on this, um, there's some really natural next steps that people are asking about. Um, for example, like it would be really nice if you could share a highlight with like a comment or a little bit of discussion um, or maybe some reactions and, and like emojis and stickers are really popular in other apps. Uh, what about making these highlights like persistent? So when you come back to a page and if you've highlighted things before, maybe you want to see them again. Uh, so when I heard a bunch of these, um, like something clicked in my head and I was just like, oh, these are annotations. Um, so when you're sharing these, uh, you can't assume that the recipient is going to be using Chrome or any specific uh, client. So this is something that would really have to work in like all browsers in the long term. Uh, and one of the principles that we have on, on the web platform team in Chrome is, is like neutrality. Uh, so we don't want to build things that are specific to any one party. So if like Chrome or Google can do something, um, then others should also be able to have the same capabilities. Um, so this brings me to what I want to talk about today, uh, which is how do we enable uh, annotations that are built into the browser? Uh, so this talk is based on an explainer that uh, we recently published. Um, so this is the document that Dan was mentioning. Uh, you can check it out uh, at the link on the screen. Um, and by the way, feel free to leave comments as annotations there. Um, so I've been using Hypothesis and I had a good discussion with Dan about it, but feel free to jump in and, and share your own thoughts. Um, so in this document, we're trying to clarify a vision for how annotations might work in the browser um, and what we would need to add to the web platform to make it possible. Um, I also discussed some of like the reasoning of why I think this is specifically a challenge for browsers, um, since we already have annotation tools that work quite well. So um, I just want to clarify a couple of things before we really jump in. Uh, this is all really early stages. Uh, I'm quite optimistic, but I also don't want to overpromise or give a false impression. Um, this kind of a change does carry quite a bit of risk. Um, so it's very possible that like we'll do a bunch of explorations, try some things here, and it doesn't pan out. Um, that's just the nature of, uh, of the web and, and technology in general. Um, doing this right does require a ton of work uh, across many fronts. Uh, so this is something that we want to socialize and get feedback early on, so that's why I'm here. Uh, we want to work out in the open and being very inclusive in, in gathering contributions since this is a change to the web platform and it affects more than just Chrome and its users. Uh, and everything I'm discussing may sound somewhat vague at this point, um, and that's because we haven't really made any decisions yet. Um, we still have quite a bit of convincing to do, uh, even internally within the Chrome team. Um, so please keep in mind that nothing I'm presenting today is a completely fully baked proposal or something that we've committed to. Um, these are more just ideas and, and kind of the directions that we're looking into. Uh, but the, the flip side of this is, is that if, if you have opinions, you can still, uh, this is the best time to, to have influence, I think. Uh, and I'd like to focus here mostly on the platform aspects uh, and not so much on like the UI and product decisions. Um, so I'll clarify a little bit more uh, about what I mean here in a moment. Uh, and the last thing is uh, I'm somewhat new to annotation, um, certainly within this crowd, I think. Uh, and so my thinking isn't going to be super sophisticated here. Uh, part of my goal is to see the discussion here uh, and get more awareness for this work. Uh, but really, I'd also like to hear and learn more from you all uh, about some of these issues uh, and how we might solve them and how, how best to think about them. Uh, so I'm hoping that we'll have some time at the end um, and have a discussion. Uh, but if we run out of time or if, if we don't get to your question or, or just if you need some more time to digest this, uh, feel free to shoot me an email or a tweet anytime uh, or, or check out our GitHub repo and, and leave comments there. Uh, so I just want to start by explaining what we're not trying to do. Uh, when people hear the words browser and annotation, um, often immediately their mind just jumps to like, here's a commenting section for the web. Um, and we really don't want to have this one big commenting section. Um, there's a lot of examples, I think, of like large platforms with commenting. Um, and in the best cases, it requires just an immense amount of work um, to even make it usable. Um, personally, in my own opinion, I think like when a community is overly broad, um, the commentary becomes less useful and less thoughtful. Um, so this is a case, I think, where having some decentralization would be very helpful. Um, and it lets communities and groups self-organize and self-moderate um, at an appropriate scale for them. 
And I think this is really helpful to mitigate uh, some of the biggest challenges and criticisms that we might face uh, from bringing annotations to the web. So I've mentioned that we want to focus uh, on the platform aspects. Um, so I just want to clarify what I meant by that. Uh, very coarsely, uh, the platform is the bits that we would actually want to standardize somewhere in a specification um, so that clients and other players in an ecosystem can interoperate. Um, so I'm a biased browser engineer. Uh, so when I say web platform, I'm thinking about browsers and web pages. Uh, but the web is a lot bigger than just browsers. Um, there already exists the web annotation spec, um, which is already standardized, like what an annotation on the web looks like. Um, but it doesn't mention web browsers uh, at all. Or I certainly missed it. Um, and as somebody who's like spent the better part of the last decade working on, uh, on the web in a browser, um, I actually only just learned about web annotation in the last year or two. Um, so this is a gap that we would actually need to bridge. Um, so the platform is things like formats and protocols uh, for annotation data, uh, which web annotation already provides. Uh, but we also need to think about um, things like opt-in signals for pages uh, and ways for pages to announce uh, that an annotation source exists. Uh, for example, like how does it how to style highlights? Uh, the reason that I want to focus on this um, is that I think in order for the ecosystem to flourish, uh, more or less everybody kind of needs to agree about these issues. I don't want to talk too much about like the individual clients and how, how they're implemented and how they present annotations, uh, because I think that those are things that can easily change. Uh, and those are the things that would likely be iterated on uh, based on feedback and experience. Uh, and they're also the things that Chrome or another browser or another agent um, they can disagree on that and make different choices uh, depending on their own product goals and user populations. Uh, and I think that this disagreement is good. Uh, it allows differentiation and innovation. Uh, so for example, Chrome serves like billions of users. Uh, and so it's limited in how complicated we can make our UI uh, because it has to be usable by basically everybody. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you're an academic who spends every day annotating, uh, you might require something that's more purpose built. Uh, so I think it's healthy to let clients be opinionated uh, as long as we make sure that they're all speaking the same language. So I want to talk a little bit uh, about the players in this ecosystem uh, and how we've been thinking about them. Uh, the W3C has this really great uh, priority of constituencies which puts uh, basically the needs of users uh, ahead of the needs of page authors, uh, ahead of the needs of implementers uh, or browsers. Uh, however, now we also have uh, annotation services uh, or annotators. Uh, just to be clear, uh, when I say annotator, uh, I'm talking about like an annotation service, uh, which is not to be confused because you can also think of a user making annotations as an annotator. Um, so yeah. Uh, but if you look at this picture, uh, we already uh, have some questions. So annotators seem to be somewhere between like a user and a browser, uh, but are they more or less important than page authors? Uh, and even within users, uh, there's multiple class of users. Uh, we have just everyday users browsing the web, but somebody who creates an annotation on a web page uh, is also technically a user. Um, in a way, they're some sort of similar to a page author in this case, but not really. Um, so clearly we've got a little bit of ambiguity, but I also don't want to rush to be explicit about creating an ordering here, uh, because I think in a healthy ecosystem, the interests of all these parties are not gonna be zero sum. Uh, and so we should look to find a healthy balance of interests rather than trying to find like a stack ranking and, and elevating one over the other. Um, so annotations aren't new, um, like Hypothesis has existed for a long time, as have other tools. Um, so I think it's worth discussing why uh, I think building this into a browser introduces some unique challenges. Um, the main one is that we have a lot of users, um, like a lot, a lot. Uh, and they come with a wide range of like tech literacy and diversity and everything. Um, so really, users need to be able to intuitively understand uh, all of the different features in the browser. Uh, and so this makes it quite challenging. The browser is already super complex uh, and has like millions of features, many of which you probably don't know about. Um, so even making small UI changes is really difficult. Uh, and annotation, I think, is very UI heavy. 
Unlike uh, when a user seeks out and installs an annotation client, uh, our users might not actually know about annotations uh, or want them at all. Um, so this is a very big difference. Like if you go and if you install Hypothesis, the extension, uh, you're signaling that you actually want to see annotations. This is not going to be true for, for most browser users, I think. And since the, they're not intentional users, uh, we have to make sure that they can understand what's going on. Uh, so it could be very bad for like security or privacy if, if users get confused, right? So if they're seeing annotations, um, if they might confuse them for uh, as coming from the page uh, or coming from the browser. Uh, so we really don't want this to become like a new vector for phishing or security issues. Um, and this does affect authors, I think, at a different scale. Um, so even with existing annotation tools uh, where the user set was fairly limited, um, some page authors were already fairly upset and they don't want their content annotated. Um, so there are legitimate reasons here, um, either for like branding reasons or just to avoid abuse. Uh, this will definitely become a bigger issue if uh, annotations are now visible to all the users. And I think this really boils down to the browser users and pages um, are not primarily annotation focused. Uh, it's a challenge for us to figure out exactly how to mediate the different needs um, in the ab absence of having a good interest signal. That said, um, I think this is a really worthy goal to pursue. Um, there's a lot of really exciting uh, potential for like new ideas here. Um, I have a couple that came to mind, um, so I've listed them here. Um, you know, there's shared commentary on the web, which I think is the most obvious and biggest use case, and everybody here is probably familiar with it. Um, but there's also like this notion of like a more collaborative browsing. Um, so I would like to see the web become less lonely, um, being able to share commentary and reaction with friends. Uh, maybe you can even publish a feed of annotations that your friends can follow um, and be able to tag friends on a page. Uh, this would be really nice. Um, you know, perhaps you can have like Wikipedia, for example, providing contextual annotations as you browse a web page um, or some kind of fact checking services. Uh, another use case that has been pretty common um, in, in the past is like allowing users to suggest corrections um, and provide a bit of a feedback loop with authors, uh, which would be helpful in cases where pages are abandoned. Uh, we also have like aggregator type sites. Um, so like if you think of like Reddit or Hacker News, uh, it's kind of a regular trope uh, that people don't really read the article and they jump straight to the comments. Uh, what if we could move the commentary to happen in line with the article? Uh, would that make the discussion better? And I think providing a layer on top of the content um, can also enable uh, some more automated use cases. Um, so we can help users be more productive and, and navigate better. Uh, so for example, like at work, it might be helpful uh, for your email client uh, or your document client to provide links to like relevant emails and documents uh, depending on the page that you're looking at. Uh, or having an annotation show you how long a page usually takes to read or a tag cloud of the content that it has. What I'm really excited about here is that this really does open up something of a new dimension. Um, and by building it out as a platform, I can see it being used like very creatively. So that's the good. Um, but like, what makes this really hard? Uh, if you read our explainer, um, there's a long list of challenges. Uh, but I'm going to focus here on what I see as the, the biggest ones. Um, some of them are more technical in nature. Um, I'll discuss those a little bit later, uh, and I'm sure that there'll be a robust debate uh, when the time comes to actually uh, implement those. But uh, I think at least those are somewhat more quantifiable, uh, so I'm, I'm less worried about the technical aspects. Uh, it's the more subjective issues uh, that I think are the most challenging and the ones that I want to highlight here. So they have some smaller sub-issues, but I think they can be broadly bucketed uh, into two themes. Uh, the first is moderation. So how do we deal with content that's like abusive or dangerous? Um, what about like security related uh, challenges or, or spam? Um, no one's going to use annotations if 90% of what they see are ads for pills. Uh, and if there's one thing I've learned about the web is that if they can, somebody always wants to sell me pills. So one option uh, is that we can pass this challenge down to annotation services. So if users can choose the services that they subscribe to, uh, those that do a good job of moderation will be preferred. And so those, like the incentive structure here would be good. Um, this seems like a really attractive option, uh, but I don't think it can be the end of the story. 
Um, so users aren't always very intentional about what they install. Um, so I'm sure that this Im image is maybe not totally, in, uh, it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but I'm, I'm sure it brings back some memories for some people. Um, so, I mean, if we do have this concept of a subscription, um, we would need to consider how we can uh, make it clear and safe uh, and basically provide enough friction that it's, it's difficult to do unintentionally and, and easy to undo. Um, which really brings up the next question is like, can we uh, make sure that annotations are always clearly attributable? Um, if users can know where an annotation is coming from, it would become a lot easier for them to either block or remove bad actors. Um, but this does rely on users having a good mental model uh, of what's happening. And so I don't think it's, it's that simple. Um, at the very least, this will need quite a bit of thought. Um, there's also the question of like, how much can the browser do to detect spam or, or like mal notes? Um, if, if there are things that we can do, um, there might be room for like the user agent to surface that to a user somehow. Um, so for example, if we can figure out that some text is, is spam, um, maybe those annotations get hidden or grayed out or at least like uh, shifted to the bottom. It does also seem like it would be really useful um, to give services uh, some signals and tools so that they can help do this job better. Um, so for example, uh, a lot of existing tools uh, have a method for users to be able to flag specific annotations. Uh, should we standardize this kind of feedback? Um, maybe there's also other data that a browser could provide uh, to a service that might be useful for them to do moderation. Uh, I don't necessarily know uh, what all of this is yet, uh, but depending on how the UI looks, like the browser might be able to tell how useful an annotation is to a user. Uh, surfacing that to the service might be something that would be useful. Uh, so finally, I think we can structure the incentives here um, in a way that might discourage misuse. Um, it wouldn't completely eliminate it, but like for example, if annotations are hidden behind a click, um, they become much less as a surface, uh, much less attractive uh, as a surface for like spam. Um, so the second major challenge is uh, that at least that I see, um, is how much control do we give page authors? Um, this is a complex and, and contentious issue. Um, and I think there's good arguments on both sides. Uh, on the one hand, like the universality of annotations is kind of the point. Uh, if annotations work only on some pages, um, it'll be really confusing to users and they'll be much less useful. Uh, and we also don't want like unscrupulous actors to be able to shut down legitimate debate and discussion. Uh, but on the other hand, some authors don't want to deal with abuse, um, and particularly those from vulnerable communities. Uh, people also have built businesses on the web, and we don't want to enable mobs to go brigading across their virtual storefronts and destroying their livelihoods. Um, separate from that, in some cases, it may actually be better for the user experience uh, for annotations not to be shown, at least by default. Um, so for example, there are some very dynamic pages, like basically video games, for example, probably wouldn't, uh, wouldn't benefit from this. Um, so I know this has already been a challenge uh, for existing services, um, and this is something that they've dealt with in the past and I'm sure are still dealing with, uh, but bringing this to a broader audience is definitely gonna amplify the stakes. Uh, so personally, uh, I think that giving authors at least some way to signal their preference uh, would be a good step. Uh, at the same time, it seems like users should be able to override the page preference. Uh, after all, the browser is the user's agent. Um, but something else to consider uh, is, are there any signals that uh, the user agent can actually gather in aggregate here to help make better decisions? Um, so for example, like if many users are overriding a specific page's preference, um, should the user agent start doing that for all users? Um, I'm not sure yet. This isn't a question that's like necessarily answered, uh, but it does seem like that's something that different user agents could at least take different positions on. Uh, and personally, I think that uh, a lot of this will come down to what the default presentation looks like. Um, so there's a trade-off here to make uh, on how, how visible annotations are by default. Uh, we don't want them to be annoying um, but we do want them to be discoverable. Uh, so uh, on one hand, like the more visible they are, um, the more objections we'll get from authors. Uh, maybe on pages um, that wants to like opt out, um, annotations in their highlights 
uh, wouldn't initially be visible, uh, but maybe an icon in the UI somewhere might light up, um, which would then show the annotations. Um, so this is just to give you an idea, um, but I did a quick little mock-up here. Um, uh, as a disclaimer, this is just a mock. Um, it's not indicative of anything that we're doing yet, um, but this does seem to me like it would strike a fairly good balance, um, but I, I am curious to hear what other people think about this. So getting a little bit more technical here, um, everything I'm, a, I'm about to discuss is just ideas. Uh, we haven't put down any code or even proposal text yet. Um, it's likely to change due to feedback um, or just meeting reality. Uh, but if anybody does have strong opinions, feel free to leave suggestions or criticisms on our GitHub repo. Um, so this diagram is, is kind of like the main one that I, I use to help explain how this might work in a browser. Um, the green notched boxes at the top represent what I call an annotation source. Uh, a source is basically just an endpoint from which the browser can go and fetch annotation data. So these would typically be uh, an annotation service, uh, but for example, the browser itself may actually be a store of annotations as well. Um, so you can see here there's a user box. Um, these would be like pri private annotations that the user doesn't necessarily want to share. Um, so maybe annotations could also be uh, embedded directly in a URL. Uh, I'll discuss a little bit of these, uh, a, a couple of options here in a future slide. Uh, the browser would fetch uh, from all of the sources that it knows about uh, for any given page, uh, and then it would aggregate them and then display them in an annotation surface. Um, so uh, in my view, a surface would either be an installed extension or the browser's native UI. If an extension doesn't consume a given annotation, then it can be passed over to browser UI for display. So I can think of a few ways um, annotation sources might be added to a page, um, and maybe there's others, but th this is basically uh, how I've been thinking about things. Um, you could configure it uh, in a browser or in an extension settings page. Um, so this is basically the model that we have today with existing tools. Um, and each page load would go and query the source for any annotations it has. Um, this, of course, requires that users really trust the source um, since naively implemented, like their browsing history would basically be leaked to that source. Um, it'd be nice if we could make this more privacy preserving. Uh, for example, maybe you can use a trusted proxy to fetch the annotations, um, or you would fetch uh, all of the annotations or, or in large buckets um, so that the source can't find out what you're browsing. Uh, another option is that URLs themselves could specify a source. Um, so this wouldn't require users to subscribe to, uh, to an annotator uh, or do any kind of configuration. Uh, so this would be really useful for like aggregating websites like Reddit. Um, so this, this could be a way, for example, I mentioned earlier um, of like bringing commentary to the destination page. Um, you could imagine like linking to a news story and then saying like, go, go to the news site and then also fetch annotations from this other separate source. Um, I think separate to that, this would also be really useful for discovery um, since users probably aren't going to go out of their way to go and install an annotation service, but this is a way that they would uh, uh, kind of a stepping stone into getting into annotations. Um, related to this, um, a URL itself uh, could be a source. Um, so we could actually embed the data into the URL. Um, this, uh, this kind of uh, mirrors the text fragment approach we had. Um, this would be really nice for like very ephemeral type annotations. Um, so say that you just want to share a quick comment with a friend. Um, you wouldn't even need a server in this case. You would just encode all of the data that you need into the URL. Uh, and finally, pages themselves uh, might also want to be able to specify annotations. Um, so for example, you could imagine that uh, a today pages already host like some commentary sections, uh, but it would be really nice if they can just dump a, a link rel element on their page and say like annotations come from, for example, hypothesis. Uh, and then all of the commentary on the page would actually appear as annotations. Um, so speaking about UI, um, I think the browser UI uh, very likely would just provide like a lowest common denominator, I think. Um, you can think of this as like basic text uh, with some limited formatting. Uh, there are questions of like, how far should we go uh, over like how uh, how much pages or, or the annotations can uh, offer like styling? Um, maybe some pages can provide some hints as to how annotations should render um, just so that they fit well with the page and its theme. 
Uh, as a very basic example, um, text fragments today already allow you to style uh, the highlight using some CSS. Um, we'd probably want to allow that for annotations, but um, yeah, there, there's a lot more freedom, I think, uh, in, in annotations. I don't think that we want to allow just like arbitrary rendering, certainly not like JavaScript, um, but th there's a lot of questions over like exactly how much control do we give uh, over presentation. Uh, I do think there's still room here for extensions though. Um, so if the browser is like the lowest common denominator, uh, extensions would be able to supplement this uh, and provide extra features that aren't available in browsers. Uh, so this would be really useful for uh, just experimentation and trying out new things, uh, but also for building more specialist tools. Um, so ideally specialized features would provide um, some kind of like a basic fallback uh, that would at least be readable by users who don't have the extension. Uh, so to give you an example, uh, like maybe the browser can't display images, uh, maybe in, initially. Uh, as a fallback, we might just show like a link so that a user, at least a user who doesn't have like an extension that does allow images would then be able to go and see that. Uh, so to integrate well with the browser, um, I think extensions would need some new APIs. Um, basically so that they could receive the annotation data from the browser. Um, it would also be helpful, I think, to expose some common annotation functionality. Um, so for example, like text matching APIs um, so that they're consistent with the browser. Uh, and we definitely wouldn't want to duplicate annotations uh, both in the browser UI and extension UI. Um, so I have a, a basically an idea of how that might look. Um, again, this is all very speculative and then not necessarily fully baked, but um, here you can see kind of an event-based model um, where for each annotation, uh, you can call prevent default on it like you would in, in many other cases uh, in the web platform. Uh, and that would let an extension mark the annotation as being handled so it doesn't end up in the browser UI in that case. Um, so finally for consistency, uh, I think it would be great if we could allow extensions to directly render into the browser's UI. Um, this would let all of like the UI and, and controls be consistent, uh, but let extensions add new functionality. Um, this I think would be best case scenario, something like very, very long-term. Uh, but if, if this does turn out to be like a wildly successful idea, I think this would be a great direction to go in. Rather than having an extension build like its own side panel that looks very different, uh, let them kind of customize the inside of the annotation uh, that the browser provides. Um, so as we talked about, um, author controls might be necessary. Uh, I think one important criteria here is that uh, some authors don't necessarily control their server or domain. Um, and so we need a way for this to be applied um, by specific page content. Um, so hosted blogs here are a common example. Um, for these kinds of authors, um, they might not be able to set like HTTP headers um, or, or a per, per domain mechanism won't necessarily work for them. Um, I'm not yet sure uh, how complex or granular this needs to be. Um, it's possible uh, authors might want to be able to block uh, by a URL uh, of the annotation service. Um, this would be consistent with some other like security or, or uh, like content security policy and other features on the web. Uh, let you block by origin. Um, on the other hand, uh, maybe this is a little bit overkill uh, and it would be simpler just to have like an allow block for all annotations. Because um, again, at, le at least in my, in my mind, uh, I don't think that we would want to block annotations, uh, but more just like control uh, how visible they are and, and how much action a user needs to take to see them. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I've got. Uh, I've got some parting thoughts. Um, I, th I think that this would be a pretty major change in how users interact with the web uh, from today. Um, it's really exciting, but it also comes with quite a bit of risk. Uh, and I, so I think we want to be really cautious and thoughtful about how we approach it. Um, we want to do this in a way that includes the whole web ecosystem. Um, so we're trying to work in a way that's transparent and includes anybody who'd like to participate. Um, and we can't do it alone. Uh, for me, success means that this is available in all browsers, not just Chrome. Uh, and we have a healthy ecosystem of clients and services. Um, so I'll just reiterate again, um, this is all very early stages um, and it's premature to say that like Chrome is committed to anything. 
Um, there is a chance this could all fizzle out. Um, but that said, I think so far so good. Um, we've had some very supportive comments both internally and externally. Um, and so I'm, I'm looking to uh, kind of broaden uh, the, the community that's, that's involved here uh, and, and get more feedback, I think, is, is the most important thing. Uh, frankly, I think like this community of, of annotators and, and people in, in interested in annotations, I think uh, I kind of know, I think, what the opinion will be just because like people are excited uh, here to see annotations become more mainstream. Um, that's not going to be the case for all communities. Um, so I am trying to broaden those circles. Um, but to maximize the chance of success here, um, I'd, I'd like to work in like small incremental uh, stages rather than trying to like put together one big vision and then deliver it all in like a big bang. Um, so the main benefits here are that like if we can, uh, this would let us deliver some value much sooner. Um, and if the priorities do eventually change, like that value would still remain. Um, I also think it's easier for us to get feedback in smaller chunks uh, and we can learn from our mistakes and iterate on those. Um, and this is maybe a bit of a guess, but I also expect that it'll be easier to digest for the entire ecosystem if we take like small steps in incrementally. Um, so just one thing I would note is like, once we do eventually uh, publish some kind of proposals or, or build features, don't be surprised if they don't uh, completely like satisfy this vision that I've outlined. Um, we are going to try to do this in like small pieces. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions or just like hear comments and, and see some discussion. Awesome, David. Thank you. That was all really terrific. Um, um, you uh, you definitely I think get at a lot of the questions and so forth that were in the, in your paper. Um, I will note, by the way, that the URL that you uh, pub pushed, published in there, which was, I think, an alias for the GitHub page, um, isn't working for us. So we we did publish the URL to the to that um, GitHub page in the chat wow. here, and so that Thank you can see it. But you might note that. Um, so I'll I'll just I'll uh, start with with one or two, um, and and let uh, people post more in the Q and A. Um, and um, also, at some point, Nate can come on and maybe pull some of these Q and A questions into the into the window here. Um, but um, you know, right here at the end, you talked, and I know you've kind of put together a proposal, which is at your page, and you know, really enjoyed uh, annotating um, that with you. Um, but is there another? more large, larger or more formal proposal that might come from Google, you know, or, or kind of white paper or descriptive object um, before you got, you know, kind of involved to work uh, or got down to work? Uh, so, sorry, can, uh, can you clarify? Is, is, there a, is there a more formal proposal that might come from Google about this work, more formal than, for instance, your you know, speculative paper. Yes, um, so definitely like once we actually uh, have something more concrete, um, I, we would be putting forward, like we would have a spec for this uh, or like a, a draft spec. Uh, so the way we worked on this in like text fragments is we put out an explainer, um, we had some ideas, uh, and then we uh, in Chrome the way we do this is we will build the feature like behind a flag uh, and we won't ship it until like we have uh, approval from like our API owners and, and the entire kind of like Chrome shipping process. Uh, but we would have like more formal, uh, certainly like a, like I mentioned, like a draft spec, which would actually specify exactly what you need to do in other user agents to have an interoperable implementation. Um, I would, uh, I think like anything that we do, I would also put out um, another explainer, I guess, with more specifics. Um, just because like specs are difficult to read even for the experts um, and so having something that's like human readable about like here's what we are proposing uh, and then have some debate and iteration on that. Great. Um, uh, let's see, let me just um, start going uh, here to the community, um, not in any particular order, but just because I'm looking at it, um, Mark Graham from the Internet Archive, uh, director of the Wayback Machine says, a couple things, but um, um, can you speak to annotation interoperability um, and, and maybe 
what that means fully expressed in the kind of implementation you're talking about. Yeah, so I think the, the data and protocols um, are something that we would want to be interoperable. Um, and luckily, we already have the, the web annotation standard. Uh, so I think that is something that we would want to leverage uh, and, and basically build on that. Uh, so in, in a world like that, uh, an annotation created by Chrome would then be viewable in like Hypothesis. It would be viewable in, in Safari or whoever else decides to uh, implement that. Um, of course, web annotation is an incredibly detailed and large spec. Um, so for example, Chrome might not interpret every possible uh, property that you can set on an annotation. Uh, but at the very least, they would understand uh, what those look like and, uh, yeah, basically let you uh, interoperate. Um, Brad, uh, Brad Myers from Carnegie Mellon asks, um, uh, could annotations also apply to web apps like Gmail or Google Docs or Maps, which is an interesting one, um, so we could, uh, so, so that the interoperable nature of how we imagine annotation might apply to some of the things which implement versions of that, I guess. Already. Yeah, so the, the distinction between like a, a web app and a document is kind of blurry. Um, so naively, yes. Um, unfortunately, like dynamically generated content is something that's a challenge, um, I think, for like existing annotations already um, and is something that we would uh, want to solve. Uh, in the case of like maps, for example, um, I think that's one that would be like naively very challenging uh, because you basically have like some kind of a canvas rendering and it's it's not really clear um, like what you can attach an annotation to. Um, but we could certainly look at like providing uh, API so that uh, like to take maps as an example, um, maybe they want to actually be able to specify things in their canvas that like this is an annotated, uh, like an anchor for an annotation and you can add things to it. Um, I think this would be a very like long-term uh, play uh, because generally I think like until we have a lot of users and this is something people are asking for, uh, it's going to be a tough sell for, for teams that already have like limited resources to go and add this. Um, but yeah, it, it's possible. It, it's just like this wouldn't be our first priority. Um, great. Um, Mateus uh, um, from uh, Norton asks, uh, how might we bridge annotation features already built within a web app? Um, like, for instance, uh, the annotated features in Norton's Reader um, with a broader platform um, so that annotations in any book can cross the boundary into the browser's annotation stream. Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, if, if I understand correctly, um, maybe to put it in an example I'm more familiar with, um, is like in Google Docs, for example, you can uh, go and make comments on a document. And, and so that's like a form of annotation. Um, and so how do we uh, make those more consistent, I guess? Um, that is something where I think like long-term, um, like docs shouldn't have to build that kind of feature themselves, uh, or at the very least should, uh, should be able to go and like augment the browser's UI with, uh, with like APIs. Um, but again, this is, I think relates to the last answer, whereas like this is like a long-term thing. Uh, and if it, it's very popular, is some, that's like a direction that we would wanna go in. Um, but it is, uh, it's it's possible, but uh, yeah, it requires lots of thought, challenging. Indeed. Um, uh, Chris, uh, Chris Aldridge uh, asks, how can we better annotate uh, embedded images? Audio, video, it would be nice to annotate an audio file directly to its file page rather than pages in which it's embedded. Ooh, that's an interesting one. Yeah, to be honest, I haven't really thought about this very much. Um, yeah, it, embedding like rich media, in particular the things like videos, um, sorry, annotating uh, things like videos seems a little bit more difficult. Um, yeah, this is this would be something I think we would consider later on. Um, certainly the other direction where I think uh, you might want to add things like videos and audio as an annotation um, seems like an easier problem to solve, I think. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of like the generality of annotations, yeah, it would be nice to be able to annotate videos, um, but it, it, it would be a bit of a challenge. Um, let's see, uh, um, Mark Graham asks, um, how might you work um, with Mozilla, um, other, other browsers, um, 
who are not even built on Chromium, for instance. Um, and he also asked, how might others collaborate with you? It's maybe two, two halves of the same coin. Yeah, so um, I mean, we have uh, standard processes for how browsers uh, work with each other. Um, it's a bit of a challenge because different browsers have different priorities at different times. Um, and so getting all of the relevant people in the same room can sometimes be challenging. Um, certainly once I think we have something a little bit more concrete, um, I'll definitely reach out to like engineers from uh, like WebKit and Gecko um, and, and just make sure that at the very least they're aware of what we're doing and, and can provide any kind of feedback uh, if they want to. Um, if they want to be more involved um, and, and like kind of help push this along, I would be all too happy to have this. Um, sorry, can you just repeat the second part of the question? Well, how might uh, others collaborate with you? Like uh, if um, you know somebody at the Internet Archive um, had had uh, ideas or, or capability, or, you know, notions in mind. Yeah, so the, the GitHub repo, which uh, I think you mentioned, you, you dropped the link here somewhere. Um, yeah. That would be a great place um, to just go and file issues. Um, if and when this does become a little bit more formal, uh, we would want to move that GitHub repo into the uh, web incubating community group, web platform incubation community group, the YCG. Um, so that's kind of like the, the area where we go and incubate. Um, new uh, projects on the web platform um, to let others uh, chime in and, and see progress and give feedback um, and, and help out if they want to. Um, talk a little bit about timing. Um, big, big thing, um, you know, what kind, you know, how does this evolve given your experience in launching, you know, kind of other big features in, within Chrome? What what uh, might people expect to see in, in, in approximately time, what kind of time frame? Yeah, so this, this is probably the toughest question. Um, so just to give a little context, like text fragments, um, from when I started working on it, um, it kind of predates me by a little bit. But I think from, from that until when we actually shipped was probably about two years. Um, and text fragments in comparison seems like an easy problem. Um, so uh, yeah, if, if this does turn out to be successful, I think this would be like a long-term work stream rather than just like one feature launch and then done. Um, in terms of like when you might see things um, uh, that we're building, I, I don't actually know the answer to that question. Um, certainly not within the next like three to four months. Um, I think at the very least, this would be kind of like a half year to a year thing where you might start to see like changes in Chrome. Um, I'm hopeful that we might have some kind of proposals out um, in, in before that, so that at least like the the gears of it uh, and the process behind it might uh, might be more visible. But like in terms of actually getting features in the Chrome, that can take quite a bit of time. Um, we got a question about accessibility. Have you thought about um, accessibility and maybe in the uh, in the narrower sense around things like screen readers and so forth, but, or maybe in the broader sense, just in terms of, um, you know, gen general accessibility for, for everybody. Yeah, um, I, I think this comes down to uh, more on like the browser UI side. Um, so for example, like when, when our teams would be building out the UI for this, um, this would be like front and center of like, how do you make it accessible? Um, how do you make it uh, uh, usable by like diverse set of users? So like different languages. Um, yeah, I, I think building on like web annotation, uh, I think is another thing that is helpful here where uh, W3C standards, I think have to go through this already. Um, so in terms of like uh, the design of, of the feature itself, um, I would expect a lot of that has already been thought through. Um, again, this is all very early, so I, I don't think that we've, uh, personally, I haven't gone through and thought about this that much yet. Um, but like by the time we get to shipping, this is why it actually takes so long to get features in, uh, into browsers. It's like we have to go through like all these different steps and accessibility would certainly be one of those. Yeah. But if, if there are things um, that we should be thinking about here, this would be a great Piece of feedback to get on, on like our GitHub repo. Um, the the relationship that you've kind of laid out, or the or the door that you've opened in terms of suggesting that this is a general capability that services could plug into hypothesis, or maybe like a Reddit or whatever, um, is is is. I mean, 
love to hear that, obviously. Um, are there other examples that you can point to of web features that have been built into the browser that have this kind of service other than the browser itself, which obviously the tabs are pulling content from services, but other than that, you know, kind of obvious example of a kind of a service provider browser feature relationship um, that are maybe um, suggestive. So the main analog um, I could think of here was like the uh, like the user's default search engine. Um, so all browsers, I think, let you specify which search engine you want to use, like when you type into the address bar. Um, I think that it's somewhat similar. It's a little bit different in that um, you wouldn't want just like one annotation service. I think you would want you might want to add like a list of them. Um, and I, the other difference here is that I think like like you mentioned, uh, different pages might be able to. Uh, add services like through links um, or, or through other methods. Um, so yeah, there are some analogs here, but I think this is fairly, uh, it's a fairly new capability. Um, let's see, we have a question about vandalism, of course, um, content moderation. Um, you, know, you spoke a little bit to that, uh, but um, can you, um, um, you know, I, I guess, can you do, you, do you have any more further thoughts about um, about that challenge and, and, you know, ways that you think, um, um, you know, makes sense to you in terms of how to, how to approach the problem? Yeah, I mean, most of this will just be like my own opinion. Um, I think keeping things in smaller circles uh, would definitely be helpful. Um, maybe if not even smaller, just like user, uh, where the user can choose uh, what they see. Um, so, for example, uh, we don't want the situation of like when you go to a web page and you see what the rest of the world has said about that web page. Um, maybe you just add like a circle of your close friends, and you, whatever you go to a web page, you see things that they have said about it. Um, so, I think that would help quite a bit. Um, I do also think like the default treatment that we give annotations in UI can be helpful here. Um, so, for example, when you visit a page. Uh, maybe we don't show like all of the comments immediately on the page. Maybe we have like some kind of subtle hint that like, hey, there's something here, uh, but you actually have to click through to go see it. And so the vandalism might not be visible unless you actually go and, and seek it out. Um, yeah, this is, like I said, this is one of the biggest challenges. Um, and, and so any kind of ideas we have here on how to better address it, I'm, I'm all open ears. Um... So this is this is a little bit of a provocative question, so I'll, I'll apologize ahead of time. Google um, annotation in in you know is, is a lot of things. It can be very public. Um, it can be very private. It can even just be personal notes. Um, but when it is public, it is social. Um, and Google has experimented with some more social features before, and and social networks and so forth. Do you? How do you see this with respect to the to the notion of social networks? And you know, obviously, Google, I would imagine, would want to be one of those service providers in a feature like this. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's right that this is very social. Um, I'm not sure yet uh, what like the non-Chrome part of Google uh, would want to do. Um, certainly, we haven't heard that yet. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I think there's room for, for different kinds of use cases here. So there are also non-social aspects to it. Um, so like I mentioned, some of like the more automated use cases. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I don't think this will replace like social networks, for example. Um, like there's still gonna be room for Twitter and Facebook uh, and so on. Um, but this, this does feel like a bit of a social network at a smaller scale. Um, so like the exciting thing to me would be like if I can take my my small circle of like uh, like a WhatsApp group for example um, and be able to like go and read and annotate the web together um, that seems like the most exciting aspect of it to me right um, uh, let's see um, uh, you also talked about um, um, incremental pieces, um, you know, some of which may even be um, under the hood and not even exposed as, uh, as user-facing features, but could be underlying, uh, you know, kind of wiring that, um, that the browser could, um, you know, could, could support. Can you 
talk to what some of the first primitives of that kind of um, nature might be um, that, that would obviously support a kind of an annota broader annotation capability. Yeah, so uh, I think like the, for example, having uh, author uh, um, author controls, um, so being able to uh, specify like a preference for a page, um, to me that seems like uh, a fairly easy one to kind of break out and something that would be useful, um, like even if we don't have annotations by the browser, um, like that's something Hypothesis and Genius and others can, uh, can leverage uh, and, and use. So that's like one example of something that I think uh, would, could come early. Um, I think uh, we would want to look for things where like we can build uh, a bit of UI and try this out without having to do everything. Um, so uh, perhaps like I, I mentioned the idea of like you can embed uh, annotation content into the URL. Um, so that might be an easy thing to do just in terms of like we don't have to set up servers, we don't have to set up like a, a lot of like the networking aspects of it, uh, but it would help us build um, like the UI and, and start to accustom users and, and see how users react to actually seeing these. Um, so that could be a first step. Um, what about things like that are non-traditionally thought of as like annotations, like a tweet or something like this? Is it, is, are you imagining that the harness that you are creating might support um, um, surfacing a tweet that, that tweeted about a page on the web? Um, as uh, something that could be in line? So I think this is what's really uh, exciting and, and powerful about building this as like a platform feature is that this is something that like we as, as Chrome or, or whoever wouldn't have to uh, consider this. Uh, if, if like Twitter, for example, wanted to surface tweets uh, in the form of annotations, Twitter could set up an annotation service and start uh, serving those out. Um, so. I think that's like really the uh, the important part about like making things uh, interoperable and, and using standards is like different services could be built um, and there's I'm sure there's like millions of ideas that I haven't thought of um, about like how this could be used um, and so we want to build something that uh, can be extended and, and uh, new ideas built on top of it rather than just like we have an idea for how to do sharing on the web uh, and then just like build a static version of that. Mm -hmm. um, what about personal note taking? So one of the um, things that's most uh, useful about annotation is that you're, um, uh, you know, you can sit there and take your own personal notes over any page on the web. And um, in in fact, annotation in a certain constructs, you know, kind of in the, from the web annotation point of view is identical to like a bookmark um, or something. So tagging and bookmarking be, you know, um, and, and annotation might become kind of a, of a continuum rather than a set of discrete you know, unique things. Have you um, thought a little bit about um, the personal aspect of this? Yeah, I, I think that is a, an important use case um, and maybe one that's actually easier than uh, a lot of what we're talking about since uh, it doesn't touch on those issues of like, uh, page authors and, and uh, content moderation. Um, so it definitely seems more tractable. Uh, we have like thought about like, for example, text fragments um, is like an easy way to go and do highlights on the web. Um, so like if you can make those persistent, that's like a little bit of like persistent highlighting. Um, and then it's basically just a short jump to add comments to those. And, and then you have like personal annotations. Um, so yeah, we, we have been thinking about that. Um, I'm not necessarily sure uh, how and, and when that would materialize, but uh, that is something that, that could happen. Like in that diagram I had, you saw like, uh, we had like a special bucket uh, for the annotation sources inside of the browser. Um, so this is something that like we could do and, and keep it all uh, uh, consistent with, with sort of the rest of the vision. Thank you, um, that was amazing. Um, um, really appreciate you coming, um, sharing your thoughts with us. Um, this is super exciting, and um, I just also want to give a, a big shout out to the way that you that you've gone about not only this but also the scroll to text functionality and the kind of working in the open and bringing us uh, all into the conversation feels great. And um, and I just uh, you know can't say thank you enough for for that. Oh, thank you. I'm, I'm excited to see how this goes. And uh, yeah, if, if I, I would love to see this continue. Um, so yeah.
just uh, just leave feedback and, and comments and ideas on, on the GitHub repo. Terrific. 